Okay, welcome to part two of the Puzzle Cube project video tutorial. If you're at part two, I'm going to go ahead and assume that you have created all five different colored object parts. Because what we're going to do right now is we're going to take all these cubes and we're going to build them together to make our different parts. So, first of all, go to I, go to New, click on that, and we've completed the part section. We've made a part in Autodesk Inventor. So now we're going to move down to the next step, phase two, which is the assembly. And we are going to click on standard.iam and we're going to open up a brand new assembly file. It's going to look very similar to the part file, except we don't build parts in this. We put parts together. And one day, one of you is going to come up to me and say, Mr. Z, Mr. Z, you can build parts in assembly. And I'm going to be like, yes, you can. But don't. Because things don't always work well in assembly mode when you try to build parts in it, and it can mess things up. So stay away from building parts in assembly mode. I know it's possible, but I'm pretending like it's not for now. So, go to Place over here, click on that, and you're going to want to find one of your cubes. So, since I have my blue cube in my Puzzle Cube folder, I'm going to click on that, and I, I'm holding my cube right now. I'm going to place down, let's say, four of them, because I'm going to be making uh, that like T-shaped Tetris part. So, since I have four of them down right now, I'm going to click Escape twice to free myself from that option and if I look at the screen I'll notice that right away it it responds just like how I'd control a part file everything is controllable through the middle scroll wheel on a mouse and the shift key so let's go ahead and put these together we're going to be using a tool that is much better with Autodesk 2015 than it ever has been in the past we've used constraints to do everything this time for this project we're going to use joint this is how joint works you click on joint and hover over one of the sides of a cube and you'll notice how it responds and click at the center of that cube and then click at the center of where you want it to go and inventor is going to automatically do all the math required to put your shape in place so it looks pretty good I'm going to click apply and I'm going to repeat that over here and apply. I'm going to repeat that over here as well. Now there's other options as well involved with joining shapes but for this project all we are doing is putting them together. So if I hit apply, cancel, boom. This is that shape that I wanted to create. And now that I have this shape I'm going to go to I, or yep, I Pro, save as, and in my Puzzle Cube folder, I'm going to save it as Blue Assembly. This is my blue part, and I'm going to hit save. And let's go ahead and start another part. I'm going to go ahead, I Pro, New, uh, Assembly, Standard.IAM, and this time I'm going to place my red cubes. So I think I went one forward. I didn't save them in the right place. Uh, this, let's say, is going to be a a like one of those weird Z zigzag shapes. So I might need five cubes for it. I'm going to go to join and I'm going to join it together just by clicking on the sides that I need to join it at. Every time I click apply and this is just to make sure, oh boy, I've never seen that one before. But that's fine, just click apply. Oh cool, it does it for you. Man, Inventor got so much smarter. Uh, this is the new edition. I was using 2014 last year. And it seems much more intuitive now than it did last year. So that's pretty good. I'm going to click here, click here. So now it does that, but it understands that this is still part of it, so when you click Apply, it connects it perfectly. That's amazing. And it's kind of like the Mario M. 
or like a cave stone three or something. So this is my next part. I'm gonna go to iPro, save as, and save this as red assembly. And go ahead and I'm gonna click save. Something I haven't been really been pointing out is that every time I make a part, it's showing up in the browser over here. And if I hover over one of these parts, it's highlighting it up over here. Now for this project, we don't really need to focus on the browser, so I'm not going to. Next project will be a little different. So that's part number two. Go ahead and create your other three parts. And once they're ready, go ahead and unpause this video. Go ahead and pause now. the fresh maker. So now that you have all five parts made, let's go ahead and put this into a cube now. We're going to go to I on the top, new, and instead of putting individual blocks together, now we're going to assemble the parts together. So assembly, then standard.iam again. We're going to place each of the blocks in, so I'm going to drop in a red block, and I'm going to place and I'm going to drop in a blue block. And if I had more blocks I could place them in as well but I've only made two myself to save time and because of video constraints. So we're going to connect these and what I found out is that joining it with the joint tool isn't quite as intuitive as I had hoped it would be. So unless I could turn this, which I can't really, can I turn this around? No. It's not very intuitive. So instead of using the Joint tool, I'm going to cancel that. And if you accidentally hit Accept, you can use this key over here to undo it. And undo it until you've undone it. Whoops, what's that doing there? We are going to use the tool called Constrain. And we're going to focus on the constraint tool more in future projects. Right now, we just want to familiarize ourselves with a few of its functions. So the constraint tool works very similar. We're going to stick with this option, which is mate. It should be selected right now. And we're going to select with this over here, which is also mate. Mate means together. And if you look at this image, it's kind of showing you what's going to happen. If I clicked on this surface, and you'll notice there's an arrow pointing at it, and then I clicked on this surface, you're going to hear this click noise, and then you're going to notice that the two objects are placed together. Now your two objects might not look like my two objects, but I'm going to go ahead and click apply, and then cancel. So I have two objects that are clicked together. Now, if I tried to move this object, you're going to notice right away that I can still move it. This is because even though I constrained it, I made it this to this, I didn't constrain anything else. So it could still move left and right and up and down. However, if I tried to pull it apart, you'll notice that I cannot pull it apart because I made it those two surfaces together. So in order to finish up this cube, we need to figure out something else to mate it to. So let's say I mated this surface with that surface, then it would be stuck in place. So let's do that. Uh, constrain, I'm going to mate this with this. And if you hear that click sign, the click sign, you did it right. So I'm going to hit apply, cancel, and now I can't pull it apart that way. And I can't pull it apart up, However, I can still move it up and down. So we're going to have to introduce one more constraint to prevent this from happening. And that is called the flush constraint. 
So with this option still selected, go over and click on this second one, which is called Flush. And if you notice from this picture over here, it shows two blocks flushed together or standing side by side to one another. So if we're looking at an object like this, notice how the red is slightly below the blue one. If I clicked on this surface, and then I clicked on this surface with the flush selected, you're going to hear that click noise, and now this surface is perfectly flushed with one another. So I'm going to click Apply, Cancel, and now this object has been fully constrained. What that means is I cannot pull these two objects apart. Uh, usually it takes three constraints to fully constrain something. And now that those have been fully constrained, you could hook up your next parts. And that's where the practice is going to come in. So go ahead, try to fully constrain your cube together using only the mate and the flush commands under the constraining options. So go ahead and I will see you for part three of this video tutorial. The Freshmaker.